Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray, and in this video, part seven of the Walking Robot series, we'll be looking at motivating of the joints. There are not that many ways to make a joint rotate or move. Broadly speaking, there are three major types that can be implemented in a number of different ways, each type having its own advantages and disadvantages. The first type I'm going to talk about is the piston drive. You'll see this type of implementation in excavators. In the case of in-move builders, you'll see it in the elbow where a motor or servo driven piston is used to flex the elbow and they're very easy to implement in a lot of cases but they have their disadvantages as well uh, they can be set up to give enormous amounts of torque but the amount of torque that's produced by the piston type joint is very much dependent on the location or the position of the joint at the time. It is not a linear uh, output. At the two extremes of its travel, you will have a reduced torque available at your joint. When it's in the middle of its travel, when the force of the piston is driving 90 degrees to the uh, travel of the arm, you'll get your maximum torque. And we touched on this very briefly, or rather Fred did, in the second video, if you wanted to go back and have a look at that. You can, using a piston type joint, use a cantilever or a lever arrangement whereby you push on the backside because it is basically a lever arrangement. And you can also choose to have your connection point for the piston further away from the pivot point. The further away it is, the more torque you can generate with the same piston. So if the piston is capable of producing, say, one newton of force, either expansion or contraction, then at one metre out from the pivot point, you'll get one newton metre of force. The closer you get to the pivot point, the less torque you're going to get. Having said that, piston type can be driven using either a motor and a screw, also known as a linear actuator, which is what Gale has used for the elbow. You can use a pneumatic system with an air cylinder. Usually you have two lines, one to push and one to pull. Normally the retraction of the cylinder in this case will have a lower force than the pushing action which is why on excavators you'll quite often see them push on the end of a lever. The reason for this is to do with the uh, smaller area where the piston shaft goes into the cylinder. It actually reduces the work area for the fluid, whether that be air, as in pneumatic, or for a hydraulic system, the same applies. The speed at which you can operate those at is very much dependent on one, the pressure that you have and the size of the pipes going to them. With the electric ones, it depends on the size of the motor. Hydraulic and pneumatic actuators can be much lighter in weight than what the electric motors and gearbox arrangements can be, and they can generate a lot more power, but you also have more expensive control systems for the hydraulic and pneumatic systems. Hydraulic can give you very fine control with excellent valves that can be proportionally opened. So you can make them move very slowly or very fast and you can also produce some very high pressures so therefore high torque onto our joints. The next type of drive system would be direct drive. Now in a direct drive system you embed the motor and or gearbox directly in the joint itself. These tend to make the joint fairly bulky but they have their advantage that everything is in one spot. If it's an electric motor and drive or like electric motor gearbox combination you only need to run a couple of wires to it and it's done. I have seen where they run a gearbox in the joint and actually belt drive it from a motor mounted further back on the arm 
while the motor is actually separate it is still classified in this case as a direct drive because you're going into the gearbox and the gearbox is driving through the good points on this is that it is all contained in one location and it's easy to manage the downside of it however is that all of the mass for your drive system your gearbox and normally your motor is all at that joint and if that joint is part of a limb so let's say the ankle for example of your robot when you go to move your leg forward you have to accelerating that mass at the end to get to the new position and then you have to decelerate it when it gets there this increases the amount of torque you need up at the higher joints in order to get speed the heavier the end is the uh, more torque you need to accelerate it if you can move that ma mass further up closer to the top joint then you reduce the torque you need to accelerate the leg that brings us to our third type which is the tendon drive now the tendon drive like the uh, direct drive is pretty much constant torque all the way through its range but it doesn't have the motor at the joint that's the major advantage of it the disadvantage of the tendon drive is that you do need two tendons you can't get away with a single tendon like you can with a piston drive or with a direct drive piston drive uses a single push pull point but a tendon only pulls so you need two one to, to open the joint and one to close it so to speak or bend it and straighten it's actually the tendon drive I'm looking into using at this stage with the robot and I have here the toe of my robot this is still very much a prototype and this is a first print this is going to have to be redone there are major changes I have to make to this one but using two tendons we can flex the toe very easily and we can get the full range of this one with two tendons now the torque that can be produced by the tendon is equal to the diameter that it's actually rotating around so in this particular case the diameter is actually from here to here um, i did work out compared to if it was pivoting here it works out being the same torque there's no real net gain uh, the only real gain of using this type of joint is the range of motion I can get a much higher range of motion with it you can use torque multiplication by using a block and tackle arrangement whereby you bring your line round a pulley and back sorry bring bring your, uh, this line in this case this line would attach to a a block and then you would attach a line from say this end run around and come back and as you pull it gives you a two to one ratio you pull twice as much line or twice as much tendon through but you get twice the the pulling force there's pros and cons to that as well uh, it takes up more space in the bottom of the foot which I'm aware is going to happen but it means that we can actually oh you also need to be able to pull the tendon faster it also means I can then move the motor that drives the toe somewhere up in the bottom of the tibia or the top of the tibia even getting it further up closer to that central pivot point at the hip and thereby reducing the torque required to get speed when accelerating the leg forward so that's one of the reasons I'm doing this here I'm contemplating doing it for the ankle joint here as well to get that motor up as high as I can now there's two ways of getting your tendons up um, you can either just run pulleys and hope that the points between don't change or you can run a tendon sheath where you run your line inside a tube and for that I'm planning on using 4mm OD, 2mm ID, PTFE tube, which incidentally is the same most of us use on our 3D printers where we have a Bowden feed set up.
So that'll do for this video. Um, when this foot is finished and I'm happy with it, and there's a lot more to go into it that I haven't even started to explore yet, um, I will make these files available for people to download. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on the like button. If you like to be notified when you see or when these videos do come out, uh, don't forget to click on subscribe and ring that notification bell so that YouTube knows that you're interested in these videos. And we will see you in the next video.